What's going on, my people? We back again. <laughs> Rockin' Ted, back with another one. How you doing, Ted? I'm doing good, Nana Do. So, what we talking about today? The topic. Or well, we just gonna say the title of the video. Where is my damn hot sauce? Okay. So, what do I mean when I say that? Where's my damn hot sauce? Well, what I mean is I hate it with a house with other people, mainly your children, who do not put things back where they belong and it irks the shit out of you. Now, in an open conversation, it might seem petty, but for anybody who likes their cabinets and their spices and what have you a certain way, and then the people you live with, your children specifically, come and just put stuff wherever. It drives me crazy. What say you, Ted? Well, first of all, I think you need to go back and tell the story. Um, My story? Yes, about the hot sauce. <laughs> okay, how you gonna come out here with the da 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 da? Yeah. <laughs> You need to talk about the hot sauce. Why did this topic even come up? Okay, so why did this topic come up? A couple days ago, I get up, right? It's just me and my son, Dante, home. Um, so I get up and I cook myself some breakfast. And it was a simple breakfast. Um, I don't know if it was ham or bacon or whatever. And um, some scrambled eggs, right? All I wanted, I like Frank's hot sauce. I, you, for real, I put that shit on just about everything. <laughs> I, I'm black like that, right? <laughs> so I'm looking for the hot sauce. The eggs is almost done in the pan and everything. And I'm like, where's the hot sauce, right? I can't find it. It's not where I put it. So I take my eggs off the stove, put it on my plate. And I'm like, okay, the eggs are still hot. Let me look again for my damn hot sauce. I look where it's supposed to be. It ain't there. I look in the cabinets to the left and to the right. It ain't there. I look in the refrigerator. It ain't there. I look on the island. It ain't there. I look on the countertop. It ain't there. I look in the dining room table. It ain't there. Maybe somebody went into the living room and ate in front of the TV and left it there. It wasn't there. So I did that about three times until I got frustrated and just said, you know what? Let me just eat my damn eggs. I went to go ask my son where it was, but he was in the shower and he couldn't hear me. So I said, fine, I'm just going to go downstairs and eat my eggs. So I go downstairs and I'm begrudgingly eating my eggs, right? Eating my meal. Get down to like two forkfuls left. Here comes my son down the steps out the bathroom. I'm like, good morning. Do you know what happened to the hot sauce? Now, inside, I'm ready to go the fuck off, you know, because I'm expecting that he's going to say, oh, I made dipping sauce last night, or he had, he had made chicken, which was slamming. I rated it a 10 the night before, and I thought maybe he might have used the hot sauce, or I forgot to say that. I checked the recycling bin, too, for the empty bottle of hot sauce and the garbage pail. No hot sauce, right? But I still thought that maybe he used it for the seasoning and, you know, it was the night before, so he didn't really have time to say, hey, we ran out of hot sauce thinking that I was going to need it in the morning. So, but anyway, I'm already like, oh, my hot sauce, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm steaming. But I've learned to ask the questions for us before you start blowing the spot up. So I say, good morning. Do you know what happened to the hot sauce? He goes, oh, yeah, let me go upstairs and get it. Ooh, ooh! You know I'm getting ready to go off, right? You're like, what the fuck are you taking condiments upstairs for, right? I'm ready to go off. He goes upstairs. He comes down, and then he proceeds to say, "When I came upstairs last night and I made that chicken for you and I handed you your plate, I was walking with the hot sauce in my hand. I didn't go back downstairs. I went back into my room and I just forgot that I was walking around with the hot sauce in my hand. So it was in my room. So in this instance, I blew up. I, I, you know, I, I immediately just went, okay, that's perfectly rational and reasonable. Fine. I'm not setting, I'm not setting fire on brimstone today. I'm not putting foot to ass today, but it still begs the question, where the hell is my hot sauce? Because everything else that disappears, 
You know, my spoons and my, my silverware disappears. My Tupperware disappears. Well, my nail clippers you. disappear. My ketchup disappears. All <laughs> the labels in the cabinet are turned backwards. I put them, you know, you put them in there. I put them in there with the labels yeah. forward. Mm-hmm. When I go to get it again, all the damn the UPC label bars are facing out. <laughs> That's all I see, the ingredients, you know, and the, <laughs> and the UPC bar. That's what I see when I go to get my stuff out the cabinet. It pisses me off. It annoys the hell out of me. What say you, Nana? Well, you know that I feel the same exact way. Um, I am, and I say like I, I have OCD, right? So I like things to be a certain way. I put things back and I know exactly where to go to get them. And when I do that, it's, you know, I, I, I want to go and I want to get it and I want to go on about my business. So when I go to put something where I know it, where I put it, where I know it was, and it's not there, I'm irritated. Mm-hmm. Irritated because it's like, what, what, what's the, like, I'm like, what's wrong? Like, why, 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 why? And, and I feel, I, you know, it's, it's annoying. Right. And don't even let me look for anything. Like I find spoons and forks in the refrigerator. What? Oh yeah. I told you that. I find spoons. you like, and, spoons and, and forks are just stuff. like, just like, like on the shelf. Yeah, n- no, they're usually behind something. So, like, but just like put the spoon in the refrigerator and just leave it like on the shelf behind like yeah. the milk. Yeah, and you put it behind the milk so it doesn't. Like they'll usually put it on the door, so it, I guess so it doesn't fall out. <laughs> but why? You asking me? You? Asking I don't even really understand the significance of that. <sighs> But what do we say? Like, I, you you have to think like these young people think. And I don't have the energy to think like that because I'm afraid my, blank, my brain will explode if I have to put that much energy into figuring out why you put a spoon. No, what kills me is, so maybe it's late, right? No, no so maybe it's late and you ate something and you don't want to wash the one thing that you eat was the spoon, right? Right. So you say, okay, I'm going to put it in the refrigerator. Right. What kills me is if I don't check the refrigerator for, like, you know, if I'm not looking behind something, I'm not going to know the fork is there. But besides the fact you not, you're not going to remember that the fork is there. So sometimes I'm putting on the refrigerator and it could be two, three, or four forks in the spoon. In the refrigerator. And my thing is, who did you think was going to... Like, is there a dishwashing theory in the refrigerator that when you put dirty dishes in there, somebody washes it and puts it in the drawer? I guess that's me. Because um, that's the only way it's going to go. And mm. I looked at... Because we always talking about the spoons. I looked at the forks the other day. No forks. Like, we're, we had a bunch of forks. And now we're down to um, where the forks. You want to know where your hot sauce is, and I want to know where my forks are. And we got four spoons, and I'm not buying another one. That's what I said. I ain't buying spoons. My silverware disappears. I'm like, I ain't buying another spoon. So if, if I got to buy another set of spoons, I'm going to put it. To say, I'm like, y- y'all can share the two spoons that's in there now. And I had like eight of them. Y'all can share the two that are remaining. If I have to buy right now, buy more silverware, it's under lock and key. It's a damn shame. In my own house, I got to live like I'm living with. Even when you live with roommates, you shouldn't have to hide silverware with roommates. Like, goddamn. You should be able to share a set of silverware. Yo. I, my initial thought was to get rain this summer plasticware but why should i have to buy plasticware i know how to put stuff well, away and i do that it doesn't it. help i go to the costco uh, not costco but bj's and buy a huge box of like 500 forks and put it in there it'll last a good long while but you know what when they feel froggy and they want a real spoon or a real fork they're still going there and the last time i bought um extra it didn't even buy a new set of silverware i just went to be uh bed bath and beyond and they had some really nice you know like uh one off you know you just grab a handful of spoons and i just grabbed some because i thought they were nice and uh 
slowly but surely they disappearing and i'm asking those spoons are gone well not gone but it's like you know there are some that they, are they come and they go and it's like okay when i say hey bring the uh bring your dishes out to your room then that's when they usually pop back up but before Yo. they pop back up i get i don't got nothing in my room and i just like i better walk away because if i go in there i'm gonna be like yo really yo okay so where is my right i do laundry i wash the hand towels mm -hmm. and the hand towels I, I fold them pretty and i put them in the closet yeah so today i did laundry but i looked in the closet in the linen closet there's no hand towels and i'm like really so now I just emptied the, um, the hamper where all the towels are supposed to be. And there are um, not a bunch of hand towels in there. And we have a lot of hand towels. Like, right. we have, you know, one day we need to just do, like, how many, how much linen, linen is too much linen, right? So we have a lot of linen. Especially in a woman's household. I mean, in, 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 in a female led household. Yeah. There's going to be, yeah, and I think that's, and it doesn't even matter what race you're from, there's going to be a ton of linen. If there's a woman heading up that house, there's going to be a lot of linen. But it's not necessary, right? So, I mean, like, yeah, it's not necessary. Um, I don't think it's necessary, but we, but we have a ton of towels and washcloths and um, hand towels. So, why and where are the hand towels? So I said to Raina, oh, can you check your hamper to see um, where the hand towel, you know, if you have any hand towels in there? And she, and she comes out with three, with three towels, <laughs> which, which I know is not all she has in the room. First of all, her room looks like um, the Port Authority. Port Authority, yeah, she's looking pretty decent nowadays on the inside. I mean, hell, <laughs> I'm gonna be honest with you. The the Port Authority bathroom is like one of the cleanest bathrooms like you'll see anywhere. Like right now, if you go to the Port Authority and go to the bath, the men's bathroom, mm -hmm. it's clean in there. That's nice. Uh -uh. And there's homeless dudes in there too because you can smell them and it's clean. Uh -uh. Yeah. Oh, that's a side by story. The one day, yeah. like, you know, I hate, like most people, I do not like to poop publicly, but one morning I had to. So I went in there, I found what I thought was the cleanest stall I could or whatever. And then plus you do your little wipe down or whatever. And I carry a backpack. So I got sanitation wipes and stuff in my backpack and I clean up as best as I can to get the, you know, unseen Jeremy's off the off the bowl and stuff like that and make my little uh you know I always put toilet paper on the seat and everything to make my little penis cotex you know <laughs> so you know my wee wee don't touch the stuff around. <laughs> and uh so okay, anyway another topic how much sharing is too much sharing Go oh ahead. all right I'll, I'll get I'll skip to the chase then Yo, a homeless dude came into the stall next to me and I knew because anybody that knows that nutty, dead venison smell that homeless people have came underneath the stall and crept up over me while I was in there. I was like, holy shit. Like, and and, and then I had to hurry up and get off that bowl because I'm like, yo, he very well may have sat on or somebody like have sat on this bowl before I did. It's, it, oh, yeah. it, of course it's happened. And I'm shit, like, oh my God, I got it. Shit. Oh my God. So needless, I got home and took a shower of bleach and alcohol that day. Um, <laughs> go, I'm sorry. I was gonna say something. I am not gonna say it. Don't say it. I'm not gonna say it because we are gonna try our best to stay on topic. <laughs> we'll stay on topic. Where the hell is my hot sauce? Yeah. So where the hell is my hot um, sauce? Right. And, and and we know you you there are people out there who can relate. Um, so it's where's yeah. the hot sauce? And where's your, where's your damn uh, linen? Where are your uh, hand where towels? Are the spoons, hand towels. Where are the spoons? I don't um, know. I don't know. All as I know, all I know is I can't wait for my kids to have their own household. Oh God, I forget this story. Hmm? 
You go ahead, tell a story. No, not a story. A, a foretelling. You know, the but plan. My children, the plan. The plan okay. Well, my kids mm -hmm. get married, or I might not even wait to marry. Just live in girlfriend. As soon as they get their own spot and got their own live in girlfriend, and it's like, Dad, come visit for the weekend or whatever. I'm going to go in there and I'm just going to randomly plates, bowls, spoons, <laughs> and I'm not even going to use them like in a meal, just, you know, clean. And put them in like in a Tupperware box or whatever, and I'm gonna leave the shit under the bed or something like that. So when I leave with a weekend and his girl going, baby, where are all the forks? Like, yo, before your father get here got here, we had forks and we had knives and there's nothing here. And they're gonna look around and then one day, it might be weeks, it might be months, they're gonna look underneath the bed that I slept in or what have you, and they're gonna find everything in no. the box. No, yep. you said you were gonna put it under their bed. <laughs> Well, that's even better. Put it under their bed. <laughs> but listen. <laughs> and when I they ask me what happened, I'm like, I don't know. Not me. I don't know. I don't know. No. Mm -mm. Listen, I'm not even going to wait till Raina gets married. As soon as she has her own space, which is going to make her even crazier because she knows it's only her. Mm-hmm. Okay. Exactly. That's... She knows it's only her. So then it'll be, where the heck? And she'll probably have a dog because she's been dying for a dog. Maybe. So she'll yeah. be looking at the dog like, did you take the spoons out the drawer? Yeah, she want a dog though. she find out how much it costs to have a dog. And unless she got the money to support, like, mm, won't be no damn dog in this That's house. That's a whole nother topic, sir. And we are not doing that. <laughs> no, we're not doing that today. Mm -hmm. Because my kids all been, my kids have been begging for a dog, begging for a dog, and I've been like, nope, 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 because I don't want no damn dog, and I know <laughs> what'll happen. You get a dog, all of a sudden, oh, I'm not around. Can you walk a dog? I don't want to walk no damn dog, because I don't want no damn dog. Now I gotta walk the dog, and then when the dog gets sick, who gotta pay for it? Me? Oh, you forgot <laughs> to feed the dog. Who gotta feed the dog? Me? No. Mm -mm. You know. Well, now they, they, their mother and her husband. They have two dogs, and they complain that the dogs aren't. Oh, they have two dogs now. They got two dogs. You know. Wait a minute. First, they had the big, the mastiff. Yeah. And okay, when did they get the second dog? I'm not sure. Somewhere along the way, they got another smaller um, dog, and that oh, dog apparently yeah. is, you know, uh, well mannered, whereas oh, the wow. other one okay. is still kind of like. You know, kind of like on the wild side and stuff like that. But it's like okay. the dogs aren't apparently are not as uh, well trained as they could be. You know, like these dogs got serious personalities on them. And all I'm seeing to myself is like, see, that's why I don't want no dog in my household because I don't even want to deal with that dynamic. I just, you know, if I was into it, you know, all for it, you know. But I'm not into it. So at my house, no dogs got nothing wrong with those I, when i see other people's dogs that are well mannered and trained and everything i love them like god damn this dog is enough to make this dog is so good this dog may change my mind and make me get a dog this dog i mean i love meeting <laughs> dogs like that that's a pleasure when people have animals like that but ones that be jumping all over you and wild and you can't control them and stuff like that and like yo look i ain't trying to be the dog whisperer when i come over here to visit you and be trying to get your dog in line you know and do the things that little things that i know to do to get a dog in line you know if it ain't done already by the time i get there then it ain't gonna happen so i, I don't like wild dogs untrained dogs right. even if their house broken no not for me can't we get a puppy and name her holiday no <laughs> no because when you say we that implies you and i same household and if i do not want a dog and I will stipulate straight up front, like, look, you can't lean on me. I mean, yeah, okay, we're a family, and family, you know, we use, each, we need each other, you know, for things that pop up. So there, there's things that'll pop up with parents and family and stuff like that, or personal situations. And if you're partners in life, you know, you deal with it. You know what I'm saying? You, you lean on each other. I get that. I am not signing on for a dog. You can't call me talking shit to me about nothing about no damn dog, and I don't want one. You get a dog, you on your own. He hungry. That mother, that's going to be one hungry motherfucker until you get in and feed him. Mm-mm. Really, Poppy? Look, there, there may come a day where I want a dog in my household, but definitely today just ain't the damn day. Well, and you know what? And, and here you go. Neither do I, considering that we're talking about where's the now we're talking about dogs. But since you brought it up, I was just, yeah. I was just saying because I know you love me and you gonna let me have a puppy. <sighs> but that's, you know what? 
Like we're I said, it, it got to be a one-woman show. That's we, all I'm saying. Hey, we're not there yet. Okay. Right? I mean, and we're not, you know, I don't know. I, oh, you know, we're not there yet. But when we get there, when we're there and we're ready to be there, then that's when we'll, we'll be there. Yeah, okay. Really? You don't think... That's exactly how we'll treat it. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it, but you already know what the toll is. You already know what the toll Ooh. is that bridge is, so, you know. I already know what the toll is. I'm now, now, my mind might change by then. So we'll, we'll just keep it 100. I could possibly, by the time uh, that happens, my mm. attitude may change, and I may want a dog. So, you know, there's always that. It's not to mm -hmm. say I, I'm not going to be like never, ever, because I do like well-mannered dogs. And you know, I just I don't care for the responsibility dog. of having a dog. The children yeah. grow up and they they stop. They wipe their own asses and make their food. Dogs, you got to pick up their shit to the day they die. I'm not signing on for that. <laughs> okay. I won't do that for my own damn children. I mean, unless I needed to. They sick or whatever. They need me. I'll you know I'll pick my kids shit up any day. But I'm just saying, in general, for life, yo. I ain't walking around behind a 10-year-old picking up shit off the ground. What kind of shit is that? Oh, my God. Okay. I'm sorry. Maybe the dog I lovers just... is going to get at me in the comments section. They'd be like, oh, you're a this, you're a that. But, yo, like I said, it has nothing to do with the animals. Uh, I love nice, well-mannered animals. But they're a responsibility. Any person that's really serious about pet ownership knows exactly what I'm talking about. They're a responsibility. Mm -hmm. That but, is a responsibility I don't care to have. I don't want to have to get up because a dog needs to be walked. I don't want to have to pick shit up because a dog ain't going to pick up the shit. And he done shat, <laughs> you know, outside down the block and you got to pick it up. No. I'm not a shit picker-upper. Uh-uh, you're not? No. I get enough shit from the world on a daily basis. I ain't going to pick up shit on top of it. <laughs> I'm not gonna intentionally pick up no shit here. No. I'm not. Oh my gosh, Papa. No dogs. And you know what's so funny? You're so in the moment. <laughs> like you're so in the moment. So today, I ain't want no dog. I don't care. Blah 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 blah. Okay, but like you said, life changes us. You told me the other day, I'm evolving, and you are. Well, we all do. I think you know. I mean, exactly. Now, I ain't going to front my man, uh, um, uh, my man D-Lex over at, um, um, what was it, B Bougie Kittens? Um, um, I'm, I'm probably getting the name wrong, but I'm going to put the, I'm going to put his stuff up on the screen. So any guy, you guys that want a Bengal cat can go hit my man up. He's one of the handful of people in the New York City area that sells uh, these Bengal cats exclusively. You know, beautiful animals, you know, but, um. You know, and they, they, they're they adorable, you know, and cats is like, hey, you empty. The, I, I can I could get with that before I can get with a dog. Like, yeah, empty the litter box or whatever and, you know, and put the bowl out and they basically leave you alone unless you get one of them real social cats that like be jumping on you and shit all the time. But, you know, <laughs> but yeah, he got some beautiful cats for real, for real. They're beautiful. Bougie, bougie kittens, I think is what he called it. Bougie, bangle, bougie, something like that. Bougie, bangle kittens. Bougie, bangle kittens, or something like that. Yeah. So, like I said, we're going to put his information up. We're going to shout him out and uh, get him some business, hopefully, if you people are looking for, uh, you know, a nice mm -hmm. cat bangle in the tri state area of New York City. Mm -hmm. Looking pretty. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm, I'm not a cat person. Um, actually, I, I mean, yeah, I'm not a cat person. I would probably, I would, you know, I, yeah, I'm just not a cat person. And it's probably because they don't, they're not as, you know, friendly and unless you get a really social cat. But that's like us. Like, I'm not social. I mean, I act like a cat. It's like, I'm not fucking with you. But Stay you, over there. Even. Right. But you know how to be social. Well, cats do too, but it's like, you know, but when they, they basically don't want to be fucked with, they want to be left alone. You know, I, I can rock with that. 
I like how Dave Chappelle, <laughs> he didn't like his wife's gay boyfriend because he talked the way he, he, he talks the way he thinks cats would sound or the cats could talk. Hi, David. <laughs> That's. <laughs> Hi, David. <sighs> yeah, so I'm not upset with cats. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm just not a cat person. And although I told you, uh, my manager has, um, she has two Bengal cats, yeah. Whiskey and Vine. Mm. And she lives on the beach in Connecticut. And I told her I would cat sit anytime. Just so you can She's get like, a free cat notification. So, so I yes, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> but I will, I will give the baby their medicines. I will love those cats all I can. Like the back of her, her backyard is literally the beach. Wow. Well, there's a pool, and then there's the beach. That's nice. So, oh, <laughs> okay. Hello. So yes, mm. it's like a Hamptons house in Connecticut. So I, I told her she's going away in March. I'm like, listen, you need a cat sitter. Don't <laughs> Putting your bed in, huh? Yo, don't pay to put those babies up at a kennel or whatever. Even though she says like her vet um, has a place for boarding. I'm like, just give me the vet's number. <laughs> I will call, trust me. They will come back and not like you because they'll be like, oh, we love this cat sitter. Go away more often. And mm. I will do, especially in the summer. <laughs> mm, all right. You ain't got to keep food in the house. I will go shopping. Mm -mm. And I can work from home. Hello. Hello. So, uh, not really a cat person, but I will be one to be at the beach all summer. <laughs> um, uh, so the things we do for the come up. Ooh, yes. Maybe Ooh, that goodness. should be a topic one day. The things we do for the come up. <laughs> or would do for the come up. Mm -hmm. So you were saying how, how much would it take for you? <clears throat> no, I'm not going to ask you what you would do for the come up. I'm not going to do that to you. <laughs> put, your, put your business out in the street like that. Not yet anyway. Mm -hmm. So you see how we went from one topic to the next. But no that's girl. how we conversate. I mean, when we talk off camera, that's how it is. I mean, you can or I can bring something up and say, you know, and like, okay, I want to talk about bologna sandwiches, and somehow it turns into frisbees. I don't understand, but and that's I how our conversations go. Hmm? And it's, it's, I try to keep you on track. I don't know what you call what my mentals with my brain is i'm everywhere i mean i don't mm -hmm. think they call that schizophrenia but um that's like i mean maybe it's a saying? form of attention deficit i don't know but uh, oh, yeah. mm -hmm. i just think i got an overactive mind my mind is everywhere i can start thinking about something and then as i'm talking to you and i'm thinking about something i'm thinking about five or six other things in the background as i'm talking mm -hmm. to you and it gets to the point where I get anxious because I can't wait to talk about these things while I want to get it out. So it's just like, oh, I have so many shiny ball moments. It's ridiculous in a conversation. Mm -hmm. Yes, you do. But, I I do. but you know what? When it's just me and you, it's like I get it all out. Like, uh, what was the one that you like? Uh, you, the Illuminati. you like, okay. <laughs> like, why? Why are you talking about Yo, the Illuminati? You know, like, that... let me tell you. <laughs> And you never did. I'm pretty sure I came around and tied it in somehow, some way. You didn't. No? I, I, I know. Because at that point, and at that point, I was so confused. I just like, okay, I'm not going to ask him again. Because I think I asked you like four times. Yeah, you kept asking like, me during the conversation. So the Illuminati, like, it was funny because usually I'll do that. And you just let it roll before that. For whatever reason that day, you were like, Illuminati, why did you bring it up? Like, what does it have anything to do with what we're talking about? And I, in my mind, I'm like, there's a reason. We, we, we're we coming full circle to that. Let me explain to you. And apparently I never got there. You never explained it to me, Poppy. <laughs> I never and got like, there. What? what is he talking about? What the blood fire? Yeah, I don't know. So, I don't know. Oh, so where the hell is my damn hot sauce and my <laughs> hand towels? Um, 
MS. What, up, what else is going missing in your house where the not me's have come to visit you? Oh, let's see. Let's see. I mean, let me see. Oh my God. You know, like my personal things, right? Uh huh. So, oh, oh my boy, God. here we go. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Here we go. Case of the missing scissors. So, there's a pair of scissors that we keep hanging on the bar, right? And bougie, are we? But go ahead. It's not really a bar, it's just a cabinet with all the liquor on yeah, it. I got one bar of liquor under the cabinet in the kitchen. That's my bar, but you, go ahead. You know, you know how many bottles of liquor I have. I know you lush, but go ahead. Listen, if I was a lush, they'd all be empty, but they're all full. So, mm -hmm. um, we put the scissors there. So, and that is so that if anybody needs the scissors, you go there, the scissors are there. The scissors are never there. Never there. And I can just walk into my daughter's room and get them. But now I'm saying, no, here's the thing. I have bought her scissors. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many times. I mean, from when she was younger, too. Mm -hmm. And there's scissors in her room. But it would require her to look for them. And she doesn't have a hazmat suit to to look, you know, mm -hmm. to get down to the nitty gritty mm -hmm. to look for scissors. Oh. So the scissors are never there. And I have scissors in my room. And sometimes she will take those. And then she'll say, I didn't have it. And then I go in her room and she'll go, oh, those? I thought that those were um, everybody's scissors. Why would everybody's scissors be in my bedroom? in my closet so not only did you come in my room to take the scissors you had to look for them and you did but you look for the ones in my room but you won't look for the six pairs of scissors in your room oh you and, and again so here's the crazy thing right you say it's just scissors it's just this uh-huh it's about respect my my space it's about respect my things it's about if you need something because you're working on something get it for yourself that sounded like a show you can moment where you wanted to do a roundhouse and come down with the uppercut and be like, show you can. <laughs> Yo, it's just, it's just, it's just like, especially like you said, these are adult children, like yeah. adult children, right? Like, really? But I was, I was talking to a coworker and she said her son is 29. Uh-huh. And if there, and she just like, there are things that if she doesn't do it for him, he just won't do it. Or, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm just like, okay. I, I'm not, I can't, I can't do this for another, what, she's 20, uh, eight years. I mean, and if you do it for eight more years, you're going to be doing it for more years. See, it's it, not even going to end at eight years. It'd be different, it, and this is another topic for us, you know, if the kids are contributing to your situation in a major, meaningful way. Because there's plenty of people, adults, that live with their parents and have their parents live with them, however it's configured and stuff like that, and all parties involved contribute in a meaningful way. However that manifests, it doesn't matter the dollar amounts, but whatever's meaningful for that family, it's a meaningful right. way. It's not a situation right. where it's like... One person is footing the whole bill. My other person is just a leech on, uh, a, a leech on, um, on resources. Mm -hmm. You know, um, <laughs> uh -huh. yeah. I mean, it's like I can't tell you how many times. You know, I mean, stuff just comes up. You know, missing. Um, I don't know if you recall the story about the uh, the muscle massager. Um, <laughs> The, no. the muscle massager piece. All right. No, so, I remember the story about the sneakers, though. Which I haven't seen hide of here. The long story of that, I had a pair of black Converse that disappeared. I'm asking everybody, where the hell are my Converse? Don't know my nose. A pair of sneakers just walked out my house. Like, mm -hmm. really? My Converse are just gone. Nobody knows anything, right? 
My son has a car accident a couple years ago. The car was total, goes to the junkyard and all of that. Okay. It's only years later we're talking. This is usually how shit works in my house. Years later when they feel comfortable and they think it's water under the bridge, they'll think it's funny to bring up what really happened. And yeah, I think my shoes were in the trunk of the car the day I had that accident. Okay. <laughs> so the muscle massager. Mm-hmm. Um, my uh, my 18 year old Donovan, little beefy, he uh, he had a muscle yeah, yeah. he had a muscle That's massager funny. right, which I thought was really cool. Like you know you know it's like a like a it's like an impact wrench in a in a car's garage, and you put the attachments on it, and you literally just you know like jackhammer your muscles, boom, 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 and it feels great. And he exposed me to that, and I was like, holy shit, this is amazing. I want one for myself. So I went and I bought one, right? So as I usually do when I get new stuff, I take it out. I got to touch it and smell it and, you know, whatever, and absorb it, see what it is, and acclimate myself to the product, right? I know what's in there, right? So I go to grab my stuff one day to use it. One of the attachments is missing. And I'm like, yo, where the hell's the attachment? I'm looking in the box. I'm looking in the bag. The attachment that I was looking for was not there, right? I go and I ask my oldest. I ask Dante. I'm like, yo, do you know what happened to the... um, I'm looking for an attachment for my muscle gun. Did you borrow my muscle uh, gun? And did uh, did you misplace one of the pieces? Do you have extra piece in your room? He goes, no, I didn't. Like, okay, so I'm still, I go back, I'm going crazy, I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. I ask him again, did you use my muscle massager, blah, blah, blah. He says, no, I use Donovan's muscle massager. I'm like, okay, right? I go back, I'm looking at him, looking again. I ask him to come, and I say, look, I had a muscle, my muscle massager was right here, and now a piece is missing. Are you sure you didn't use it? And he was like, yeah, M- Donovan's muscle m- uh, machine. It was right there. I used it and I put it back. No, that's not Donovan's muscle massager. That's my <laughs> muscle massager. He's like, oh, well, still, same answer. I don't know what happened to the piece. Fine. Months passed. I didn't even, I forgot about it. I didn't even, I wasn't even thinking about it anymore. It's just like, I just got over it. Months later, I wake up out my bed one morning, you know, whatever, making my routine. Uh, I probably went downstairs. I came back upstairs. The piece I was looking for was just laying on my bed. <laughs> I'm like, the bed, wait a the bed you just got out of. The bed I just got out of. The piece is just laying there, and I'm like, yo, am I going fucking crazy? I'm like, you gonna try to tell me for months I've been looking for this piece, and then yeah, like, I, it's impossible that I was sleeping on top of this piece that's been in my bed this whole time. Impossible, right? So. I put two and two together as most of us parents do because the kids think we're stupid and that we won't put shit together. And I'm like, yo, you found the piece in your room and you're just going to put it in my bed to try to act like a shit was there the whole time? He going to start laughing. Like, <laughs> Slob him, my bitches, you know. <laughs> He's stupid. Fucks my hot sauce. <laughs> He's stupid. Damn it, oh, Nana. Please. Please. <sighs> You know, it, it would be too much to have the conversation of what what goes missing. But what kills me is, um, Raina will ask, like, she'll ask me, can she borrow my shampoo? Like, it'll be a brand new bottle of shampoo. She's like, Mom, can I use some of your shampoo? Sure. Now, I guess that ask the first time must mean that anytime she needs shampoo, she will just come in my room to get it. But now... I need the shampoo, and Brenda washes her hair maybe two or three times a week. Okay. All right. I don't like the way it smells, but whatever. Now I need to use the shampoo. I can't find the shampoo. Or she will actually come in and say, Mom, there's no more shampoo. What do you mean there's no more shampoo? You were the last one to use it, like, and when you used it, it was a whole bottle. No, but I've been using it, and now it's no more. So what you want me to do? So is that the same as saying, hey, I used the last of the shampoo, Ma, when you go to the store, can you buy some more? Is that the same thing? No? Not so much? 
I want to say in retard speak, but you know, you're not supposed to say that. So, um, <sighs> yeah, topic we're going to get to about referring to people as retarded. <laughs> um, you can't say that. So, um, yeah, you can. I, I, well, I, I, I don't mean to be offensive, but yes, it means that in um, people who don't communicate clearly, uh, I, 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 because I don't, yeah, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god I had I guess so. I, I mean but it, it's just like so now I buy more shampoo right mm -hmm. and we start the pattern over so even if I say and here's the crazy thing right even if I say you know what when I buy shampoo let me buy Randy some shampoo because even though she's 21 and should be buying her own shampoo let me just buy her some shampoo so I can keep my shampoo it will still happen so, I mean, sometimes I feel like I'm going to lock up my stuff, but then why should I have to lock up my stuff in my house? Why? It, where, I, where I pay, why? Why? Why should you have So, to? you know, I don't know. So, like, it, do you do it for sanity's sake? <sighs> you do it so you don't catch a case? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, 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 can, I can see that. You know, I mean, especially if you haven't got it established, like, you know, just draconian, you know, just beating asses continually, you know, it's <laughs> like. The beatings will continue until morale improves. You know what? I think that <laughs> boat sailed a long time ago. I should have established that shit. But then, you know, hey, is it abuse? Okay. Or right. is it uh, just punishment? No. Okay. So listen. So I said to Raina today. Oh shit! Here we go, people. Here we go, when people get ready. <laughs> oh my god! I said to Raina today, when I ask you or when I tell you, because I shouldn't have to ask you not to use my things without my permission, right? So when I tell you not to use my things without my permission, and you do, like it's disrespectful. Yes. Basically, you're saying f you, and I'm gonna use it, and what you gonna do about it, right? Mm. So I said to her, I said, it's disrespectful. I mean, and if you were a teenager or if you were younger, you were like little, I, you would have got a spanking behind it or you definitely would have gotten punished. I said, so you're 21. Like, so how do I address that? Cause hitting you is not it, clearly. Um, Cause hitting is wrong and bad. Well, the problem is, that at this stage of the game if you have to hit a grown ass adult slash that is your child you ain't spanking you fighting niggas in the street at that point <laughs> See, because <laughs> yes. I mean yes. uh, no seriously I mean yeah, it's like my, when I was a kid my mother used to put serious foot to ass like I'm talking about extension cords broomsticks the whole shit when we was little right, right. and I remember the day I swear to God it, 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 Now low key It was one of my Defining man days Like ha ha But she still found a way To get at me afterwards But um, you I as a man. young man Had got to the point Because my mother was like uh, You know um, not, not a little thing Because she was on the tall side But she was thin But strong enough To whip a kid's ass You know <laughs> And I crossed the threshold as a young man one day and I violated for whatever the reason. I can't recall what it was, but she tried to get at me physically and she couldn't because I was too strong for her to get at me. So it's not that I did anything to her. I was using my, like, I had this innate Tai Chi slash Steven Seagal type shit where she would come at me and I would just be like, oh. And then, you know, and then she would like, she would, she came light, she came to stage and she came light and kept getting heavier and heavier. And I deflected everything. So she came with the belt. I wrapped that shit around my wrist, oh, ripped it out of hand, threw this shit in the corner. She was like, what? Got the broomstick, came out with that. I took that, oh, threw that to the side. Then she tried to come at me with the extension cord, like what? Oh. So and, and she probably came out with the frying pan too and shit like that and you know and like I said I would never and I have never raised my hand to my mother I would never hit my mother and I would never even pretend or try to fake I would ne never she would probably kill me if I did that regardless of what no, I was yeah. doing if I had to ever raise yes, my hand to her she probably would have just got knives and started stabbing me at that point but <laughs> okay but 
you could deflect mm-hmm. deflection is not fighting your parents deflection you know like when you're a little kid you put your hands over your ass cheeks to try to stave off the sting you know what i'm saying your hands be all red and shit after they don't tell you try to tear your ass up but you try to deflect as most as you could and that day i was serious deflecting like i was a man like yeah 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 what mama what uh and after that it was mental warfare after that what she was very good at and she got at me mentally and you know and it it, it really fucked with she she was good she was good at her craft um but swinging back to your point is that you got adult children and as, as 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 a parent you can't be you can't be disciplining adult children like basically it's it basically boils down to it's like yo do what i say or get the fuck out and most of us are trying not to do that i mean i pushed my mother to that limit to where as it was do what i say and get the fuck out and that day came where it was get the fuck out you know so um hitting is not going to work with an adult because like i said if you got to fight a grown-ass person and if they got respect for you as a parent they're not gonna raise their hand to you but why you gotta be beating shit my, my sons is 300 fucking pounds each you know why they don't one's a football player and it's like you know if they were violating the house i mean i, I don't own guns but the day i gotta fight my kids like that that's when i'm a gun owner because i ain't gonna be rolling around these big niggas i mean i'm strong and stuff like that but no i'm gonna have to shoot somebody like you have to get the fuck out or somebody gonna get seriously injured babies my babies would never do that to you no they never would but i'm just saying <laughs> saying but just in case crazy shit happens fall. in this world like i said you know people do crazy things and i, I just like I, I you know back to your point without getting too shiny with the ball you 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 cannot get physical with uh an adult child that lives at home and they're violating i think ultimately what it comes down to is that those of us that uh are in these situations you can never just like you can never tell somebody that's in a bad relationship when to leave like only that person knows when they're done with a situation and ready to leave yeah. no one can tell a parent when they should put what kind of smack down on the situation with their adult children only they know when their limit has been reached and then they'll act accordingly and do their thing so shampoo or fingernail clippers you know forks and knives you know and you know drink the last of the milk and don't go buy none just just leave nothing but a swallow in there for you or drink out of the container like that oh no oh no 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 see that's certain certain things are just like <laughs> oh now please don't tell me do not tell me you still deal with that it's just a swallow in the container you know it's crazy i never see it but my mother would be like raina drinks out of the container or something like that. oh my it. god I'm not going to say that she doesn't because I'm just telling you I've never seen it because the day I see it. Don't put it back yeah. in the refrigerator with just a small in And why it got to be like that? The day I see it is when it's going down. No. Um, and I'm, you know, I've said. Um, Did you, you ever know, ask her? Like, yo, know, grandma said you yeah. were drinking from a container. Did you do that? Yes. And the, the one time that I did ask her that, she said um, she did, but it was like a little bit left. So she knew she was going to drink the rest it. of it. Right. She yeah. just killed the last of whatever, so she just, you know, took it to the head. No, she didn't kill it. She drank it till it was like this much left, which like she it probably was like one swallow left and you could have just swallowed it and put it in the garbage. But I think because you were afraid to go close to the garbage, because you may actually put it in the garbage, you decided, you know what, I'm gonna leave this swallow here and somebody will throw it in and I'm gonna put it in the refrigerator and I'm gonna blink and close the refrigerator and open it and somebody else will have put it in in um the garbage so what you're telling me is that she drank it down to like it wasn't even enough for somebody else to drink but left just enough so the next person would get pissed they would see it and say oh that ain't enough for nobody to drink it's basically an empty container i'm gonna throw it out that don't make no sense. i'm not gonna swallow the swallow because that ain't enough for me you know she but she drank it down to that much and put it back in the right. refrigerator yes yes you just yeah. i mean every household has their story and every parent has their limit you know and you know certain things are just not tolerated in some houses that are tolerated in others i yeah dare, i tripled there one of my sons to go put their lips to the milk container and do some shit like that in here yeah there'll be a padlock on my refrigerator if some shit like that happens up in here like i shit you not like yo nah motherfucker Mm-mm. Like, mm-mm. 
Like I said, I, I, I wish I was as stern with everything across the board and draw such a hard line with everything in my household. I haven't. You know, there's things that I'd let go and everything because it just doesn't bother me like that. But that's one of those things. Yeah, that would be a bit much. But it's like when you don't draw a hard line, they they don't like they don't get it. You know, it's funny because you said like there are certain things that go on in other people's households that don't go on in other households. And obviously, as a parent, you get to choose, you know, what you're willing to accept. And I told you the story about the pilot who was telling me. Mm. You know, that his wife was upset one day and she was like, you know, she's dreading the day that her son says, I hate you. Mm. And, um, yeah, oh yeah. and I said, um, I said, all kids don't say I hate you. He was like, yes, they do. Are you? T-? And he said, wait a minute. He yeah, said, he do. Wait, 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 wait. Listen, he said, you mean to tell me you've never told your mother you hate her? I said, to her face? <laughs> like to her actual face like look i was looking we was looking in the right. eyes and i said i hate you mom, he said black he said, man yeah. black boy black girl look at their mom and dad to their, i hate you to their face in our communities yeah. yo right so i said to him i said no he said so you're telling me that reyna has never said i hate you i said let me explain something to you okay <laughs> i said let me explain something to you I think this I hate you is a is a privileged kid's thing. Like, you know, I, I mean, like, yeah. I, That's a kid where you never get his ass beat thing. No, because I said, I always told Raina, and even as now, you are entitled to feel the way you feel. I am never going to tell you that you can't feel the sad, disappointed, angry. You feel, listen. Those are your feelings. You need to own them and deal with them. What you can never do is disrespect me. Mm, So telling me that you hate me when you are living on my back. Yep, that's pretty much how it is in my household too. I mean, I let a lot go, but there's what the one thing you can never do is disrespect me in my house. No. No. For that yeah. Mac, anywhere. I don't give a fuck where we are, you what we're doing. You can never disrespect me, me and be my no, child. No, you can't disrespect me in your house. Any house. But what you cannot, and to look at me in my face and tell me you hate me? Yeah. Shit. Ooh, Lord, make me smoke a joint. Now I don't even smoke. I need a cigarette. Yeah, let me tell you something. Boy, yeah, nah. Like when this person, and they were white, correct? No, he was actually, I think, of Indian descent. Ooh. And it was funny because when I really? said, you know, when I, yeah, when I shared with him about the, I think that it's like cultural and there's some, you know, but, but that's not something that happens in my house. And um, I, and I think told Indians him, would go for that, but go ahead. Listen, and I said to him, um, you know, you can feel the way you feel, but you can't be disrespectful ever. Mm-hmm. And he was like, yeah, that's true. I'm like, yeah, so tell your wife. I mean, if you sit up there and your son feels brave enough to tell your wife that he hates her, I mean, one of y'all ain't doing the job. <laughs> I'm not trying to tell you how to parent. Well, I'm saying, I don't know. Somebody might have missed the spanking. I mean, I mean, look, you know like I know. Like, he's only half right. Yeah, when kids are being disciplined, it's natural for kids to, you know, feel like they hate their parents at some point or another. And I'm sure my kids said that at points in their lives. I know I've said it never yes. to my parents' face. You go and you mumble the room, you stinky lady. Listen. You know what I'm saying? I hate her. I hate her. I hate her. You know, like my father, I hate him. I hate him. He's so, you don't never understand. You know, that's fine for your little adolescent mind to feel like that. You know what I'm saying? Right. But you, like, there's like putting your feet on the couch, uh, drinking out the container and the refrigerator, <laughs> uh, uh, or any of the number of handful of things you could do at a black asshole that equals an immediate ass whipping. Telling your parents you hate them to your face, yeah, you looking to get you you looking to get your face smacked off your head. Yeah. And I'm saying, yo, we, you can, yo, you know what, people, y'all can comment in the comment section too. You know what I'm saying? Would you have survived telling your parents you hate them to their face as a child? Listen, 
or you'll be like my girlfriend. She said something to her mother's face. And then she, no, she said she told her mother, um, I'm calling ACS on you. <laughs> and then she said her mother turned around and the next thing she remembers was laying in her bed. Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> I said, "What happened?" She said, "I don't know." <laughs> oh. Damn. She said, "I know I was sore and achy, and I was laying in the bed." I think I, like, I, I think I might. I'm sorry, Nana. Go ahead, finish. He go, Look, did you have in your pajamas? She said, "No, I was just in laying in the bed, and my sisters was staring up, standing over me. I'm like, is she dead? Not." She's oh, <laughs> Mom's laid her the fuck out. And then when I asked her mom, her mom was like, "You gonna call who on who?" Mm -hmm. Let me remind you who your mother is. I think. See, my my mother, she was never like my mother was the type of woman like she she was she was she was gully. Like to speak to her, you wouldn't know that, but. My mother, to the day she died, was a woman who always kept a, a, a electrical tape wrapped steel pipe in her pocketbook <laughs> and behind the front door, you know, and, and, and one by the bed, you know. My mother always had either something to go upside your head with or something to cut you with nearby at all times. My entire life, this is all I've known my mother, you know what I'm saying? And like I said, Did to you the tell day. Did she had a, a, a knife in her wallet? No, no, no. I do. I keep a razor in my wallet. <laughs> but she keeps. Uh, a, she would like find like um, like a high grade piece of wire, like a type that you would see outside of the construction site. Like if they putting up like wires for like a uh, I don't know, like a suspension bridge or something like that, like on a crane or something like that, like a thick ass, like maybe one two inch <laughs> diameter piece of wire. You know, and I believe she told me one day that the way she would get that stuff is like she'd be walking by a construction site and if she would see that stuff and she would ask the foreman if they can cut her a little 12 inch piece of, of, of fucking wire and they would do that and she would take the shit home, wrap it up in electrical tape and that was that nigga be good stick, whip your ass, you know, <laughs> always in standby. Like I said, the day she died, when I could, when I cleared out her apartment, she had that pipe behind the front door. That, that was my mother. And, uh... So, um, so saying that that's how rough my mother could be, right? But she was never quick to put foot to ass. She'd always have a dialogue and she was cold hearted. Like she would, like you would tell her something ridiculous and she would sit on the couch, cross her legs, bring her cigarette to her mouth, take a drag, think, and then say some cold ass shit to you. Right, so I one day I was bold enough to say some shit about oh I'm gonna call child services or whatever the fuck it was back in the '80s or whatever, and she was like, call them. I don't know where you're gonna stay after they bring me after I get out of jail. I don't know where you're gonna live, but <laughs> you can call them. <laughs> and that was enough to give my brain pause. Like, mm, yeah, that's probably not gonna work out for. <laughs> not gonna work out nana we're at 58 minutes well listen you the one that took us on this journey um and you know you can't i i will sometimes push you back and you know like, okay let's stay on topic but sometimes you know the conversations get get you know they get to be what they are i mean yeah yeah yeah, mm, yeah. so but all right. um you got anything yeah. you want to add or you want to sign off no, all I, all I, all I'm, you know, uh, well, okay, I will share this one story since we're talking about parents. Now, Go right? for it, Nana. One time, I live, you know, I live in Brooklyn, and it, for those of you in Brooklyn, my mother beat me from Linden Boulevard and Fountain Avenue <laughs> to Linden Boulevard and Elders Lane. How many blocks would that be? Shit. Um, oh, so they're like city blocks. So that was a long, even one block, that was a long ass whooping. <laughs> Listen, oh my God. And then took a rest when we got in the house. Mm. And I thought it was over. Mm. Not so much. Um, mm. And I mean, okay, I think I deserved punishment. Yeah. But I did not get deserve to get humiliated. And maybe I did. I don't know. Um, 
because she was afraid basically it's like she didn't know where i was but crazy you ain't know where i was but you knew where to find me to come and spank me in public so or, you know so how true was that that she didn't know where she was she knew she, she didn't know where you was she was nervous but she knew where to go to find you and when she did she, she whipped your me. ass i didn't know where you were but you found me <laughs> and it wasn't even i looked and i saw her and i walked over to her and she just started swinging Whew. she was mad and that and that be and that beating spanking you know we call it beatings it was funny okay right we hear funny. breathing ain't we right well wait a minute there was a guy that we used to work with, um, young Jewish man, and he was like, and we were like, you never got a, a beating? He was like, no, my parents never beat me. And he was like, oh, I would get a spanking occasionally. And it was like, oh, okay. So in our speak, spanking. a beating is the same as a spanking. Yeah. It's not like they, you know, beat me down. But it's the same as the spanking, and he was like, "Oh, okay," because he uh, he was concerned. He was like, "I'm eating." Oh, I could see how that would be scary for you know saying so like, yeah oh yeah we used to get beat and it, and it conjures visions of like they would tie you down and just like get a baseball bat and break your bones up and shit just, you just know tear you up like no oh. they were spanking switch it for the most part I would think the average black ass whipping was either a switch or a belt you know or a hand across the face because a hand on your ass wasn't gonna do nothing to a kid in elementary school and junior high school so you had to resort to switches and belts and switches was if we if they were able to get you to pull down your pants to get to the to the meat on your ass then a switch would do but if it's like i just have to get my swings in where i can then it's basically a belt because whatever i hit it's going to sting whether you got clothes on or not oh my god oh my god i never got <laughs> it's but I it's never, a spanking <laughs> i never got beat with a switch um, oh, my yeah. grandmother once or twice go get the, and when you, and they tell you to go out and get the shit bring it back yeah, and whip was, your ass and when my grandmother would tell us to go get a switch I listen I'm gonna take this beating because I, I'm gonna take this beating because I have no other option but I'll be doggone if I'm going to get what you want to spank me with you gotta figure that out on your own I'm not giving well, you you probably that. got extra wax for that shit probably I mean, but it was gonna come regardless. Why am I? Why am I gonna help you beat me? Ooh, cause you, you, you. I don't know. I guess in a child's mind, you figure if I go get it, if you take that walk of shame, you know, it might lessen what's gonna come. But usually it would backfire because you'd go and you know, as a kid, you're gonna go and get the thinnest fucking switch off that off that bush or off that tree that you can, you know. Mm -hmm. And then whoever was whipping your ass would tell you go get another one. Mm -hmm. And then you have to go back and get a third. Then they would braid that shit. <laughs> Rip your ass with the switch braid. <laughs> oh God! Well, yeah, yeah that's yeah, so, true. Yeah, I wasn't ever just going. That that's some that's some gangster. That's some gangster, yo. Now that's go black whipping. Black spanking. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Um, and yeah, that was a pretty pretty um yeah um, yeah pretty ugly. Uh, but, um, we can, we can yes. make another video where we can get into uh, things Worst your thing parents have had. beat your ass with. Yo, that's crazy. I can thankfully only say I've only, and yes, we do have to talk about it because I could share stories of other people. But my mother only ever spanked me with a belt. But the worst part was if I was doing too much hopping around because I don't really know anybody who stood still when they were getting a spanking. No, you hopping around, jumping around. Um, is when the buckle might get you, like when you might. Ooh, who the fuck is swinging at you with the buckle on the other end? They're not, but if you're doing this, um, you know, uh, you're doing this. Um, I was gonna say, um, you're doing the safety you're... dance. You kind of just. <laughs> you, <laughs> no, you doing the Indian. You doing the James Brown mashed potato? You like. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just trying to be shit. <laughs> night train, night, <laughs> night. Oh. Dun, 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 trying to get. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. The famous flames trying to keep that belt up your ass. <laughs> no, my God. You know, then I would go. And then I turned it into this thing that you can remember. One day I was telling my mother she was spanking me. And I was like, just kill me, kill me. <laughs> <laughs> she 
She was like, that's it. And I was like, just kill me, kill me. Oh my god. I was like, kill me, kill me. And she stopped. But I was serious. Just kill me. Just kill me. Like, it was her. I was like, just kill me. Just stop that. Damn. Out. Then stop beating me. <laughs> you know, stop the spanking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we might we might have to do we might have to do another one, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Things your parents will beat your ass with. <laughs> Yo, and the worst beating you ever had and and why? Because the and worst why? beating I ever had, I deserved it. Ooh, the worst beating you know what it's funny i mean without getting into those stories but you know the worst beating i ever got uh was me not doing my homework and the teachers calling my mother and she beat my ass so bad that day and i could tort up my body around the toilet don't you know how much space is between the toilet and the wall like nothing there was an episode of uh of of, uh, of X Files where there was this person they were following and the motherfucker would crawl up in pipes and shit like that to hide from Scully and them. I did one of them shits. I was like wrapped right behind the toilet bowl, like yo, just trying because she was beating my ass with the towel rack and shit. She ripped that shit out the wall and started beating my ass with the towel rack, and I was like yo, and I'm hiding, but like, I'm literally wrapped right behind the toilet. So I was like, okay, so she's getting my legs and maybe part of my forearms and shit like that because I'm wrapped around the back trying to just protect my ass and my torso or whatever but don't boy mm, she wasn't having oh it that morning God. she was the, not the, having I mean, it i mean and you know so there's no rationale to say like what made you think that you should run behind the toilet it was the only uh, place I could go when she courted me and I kind of maybe I ran to the bathroom or maybe when she found out that I didn't do my homework and got the call, I might have been in the bathroom. But somehow I was getting my ass beat in the bathroom and she grabbed the towel rack out the fucking wall and started beating my ass with it, you know, and it was cool because the, like I guess the bracket might have was probably made out of metal that was attached to the wall. But the mm -hmm. pole was like maybe some type of fiberglass or, or plastic or something like that. The actual pole or the bar. She ripped that <laughs> shit out the thing and beat my ass with that thing until it was splinters. She made shit like a box of toothpicks when she was done with it. Boy, she <laughs> <laughs> laid into me with that bad boy. Like, God damn. <laughs> That's when the ass beating stopped. She ain't have enough towel rack left to beat my ass with. That's when the beating stopped. <laughs> Are you serious? Yep. She beat you to the thing splintered. She beat me to that goddamn thing was in splinters. Yeah. Okay, Miss. Okay, Miss. I mean, it probably was hitting the porcelain too, so I ain't gonna say she broke the shit on my ass, but because she was trying to get at me and I wasn't making it easy, she was swinging, and I guess that was my strategy. Part of it was like her hitting the toilet and shit breaking off the toilet because she trying to get a good shot at my shot at my flesh. Right. You know, but you know that's what it is. So, Nana, do <laughs> don't you dare say where's my ketchup, a hot sauce, or nothing else. I'm that gonna say it one more said. time. Where the <laughs> hell is my hot sauce? Don't say it. That ship has sailed. I don't know. Already said it. Mm -hmm. Yo, good talk, Nana. Mm -hmm. Good talk. Oh, thanks, Papa. Oh, look at that smile, people. Look at that smile. Look at the yo, yo, look. Look, <laughs> <laughs> look at her. <laughs> Look at that precious smile. She that's an award winning smile, my people. Don't you agree? Don't you agree? She got a great smile. She has a great smile. I used to until my fronts got compromised, but you know, we're gonna rectify that, okay? So, you know. Yo, that needs to be a topic because uh when your spouse wanna go harder than you or your loved one wants to go harder than you. Right. When uh, the, the people you do business with don't do what they supposed to do, you know, your medical practitioners and, you know, the contractor or whoever don't do what they supposed to do. You know, when you know, one spouse is ready to just bring the fucking heat and the other is like, eh. it's OK. It's OK. It's not OK. Oh, it ain't OK. I said it ain't OK. Mm -mm. I know not when it comes to my boo. <laughs> All right, Nana do. To the next All time. Bye, right, Poppy Poo. Later. Later. <laughs>